Okay, so first I'm going to start with a blockchain. So a blockchain is something that can be added to, but nothing can be removed. I don't think you can actually change anything that's on the blockchain either. I think you can only add to it. That's all you can do. The way Bitcoin works is like you have a wallet address and your address points to one of the blocks and then that block will contain like a transaction and then a, another link to another block. And then like that, you can follow all the transactions for that wallet and you can confirm that the, the balance in the wallet is what it says it is and stuff. There, there's a bunch of other cryptographic stuff to make sure that you can't add a block that uses somebody else's wallet or something like that. But the idea is that it's a ledger, public ledger, and it's distributed. So that means like there are a bunch of computers around the world which have the Bitcoin blockchain on them, have exactly the same data, and it's all synchronized and it's all the same. So once you have the wallet address, it doesn't matter which of those computers you look at, it will always have the same data in it. That's kind of the basics of a blockchain. It's a public ledger, so it's keeping a record of transactions. It doesn't really do much more than that, and it's decentralized. That's the other thing. So like if one, one computer goes down, it doesn't matter. All the other computers have a copy of the whole ledger, which also means like you can't change something on the ledger because you change something, it won't match the other the other computers. And then there are, I guess there are some special cases where if half of the computers, they're called nodes, if half of the nodes decide that they're going to change a block, then it can change because half of them have decided, half of them have agreed to change that block. There are, there are some cases where that does happen in real life. And then it's it's kind of called a fork. So all the computers that are using the old version of that chain, that block in that chain, that's one fork. And then the other, uh, the new the new modified version of the chain is another fork. So now you have two Bitcoins. So at some point there were some changes to the Bitcoin protocol and Bitcoin there was Bitcoin and then there was Bitcoin Cash. Um, and that the change to the blockchain was supposed to be solve some problem with performance and the time it takes to settle a transaction. I don't remember what happened. There were there were two two groups of developers and one of them did disagreed with having that feature, or maybe they disagreed with the way it was written, but there was Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. And then another another case where, where a fork happened. So actually, yeah, let me let me get to another case where it happens um, is with um, smart contracts. So Bitcoin doesn't have these, but other blockchains have this thing called a smart contract where some of the blocks in the ledger actually contain code. That code lets you do transactions on the blockchain in an atomic fashion. So it's not just one transaction, it'll do like two or three transactions and either they all go onto the blockchain or none of them go on the blockchain. And so like that, you can exchange assets in a fashion that you know is gonna be either you get it or you don't get it or nobody gets it. Let's say buying NFTs, as an example, the smart contract will say like, okay, the Ethereum, the currency goes from one wallet to another and the NFT moves from the wallet back to the currency, back to the, so the smart contract is just a piece of code that's on the chain. I guess that's, that's the basic of what a smart contract is. So NFTs are a specific type of smart contract. Tokens, tokens are a specific type of smart contract. And NFTs are a specific type of token. So NFT stands for non-fungible token. So sometimes some of the tokens, uh, there's, uh, this isn't a token, but this is maybe an example of a, of a smart contract. Um, CryptoKitties. Yeah, the, the idea with CryptoKitties is that you can take two, two kitties, two CryptoKitties, and you can make a third CryptoKitty um, by merging them. And all of the code to do that was in the smart contract. So the, the kitties, the DNA for the kitties would live on the blockchain. It's not exactly an NFT, I don't know. Uh, this is, yeah, this is an example of a smart contract. So people can just keep making crypto kitties. I don't know how much else I can cover on, on NFTs, but so the NFTs can't change. That's basically the difference between NFT and a token, but I don't really know what it means to change a token either. So probably asking the wrong person. Does anybody have more questions? Are there are questions in the chat. There are not more questions in the chat. I think I'll let Hiroko answer what is web three. So uh, one thing with the blockchain is that storage is very expensive. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to store an entire image on the blockchain. So that's why with CryptoKitties, they don't store the entire image on the blockchain. They only store the DNA of the kitten. A voting system of blockchain technology. In the blockchain system, you can't just change something in one block and expect it to, you know, be the same on other blocks. Every block in the, in the blockchain technology contains a tag, which is more of an address. It contains basically three information. I don't know if I can remember that now. It contains its own uh, unique identifier, which in this case is, I think it's address. 
then it contains the address of the one the link before it and now it contains information so basically three things two addresses and one information is basically what it contains one of the inf one of the addresses links it to the success to the preceding chain and then with his own number his own address it links to the succeeding chain and that's how it contains with information in the blockchain system so how we block or how we voting with blockchain work all right so i thought about a random thing that would probably sort of i thought to envision something that it will work like i thought about it this way voters install pulling units in their own systems this is basically when we're talking about pulling you need to be uh, something about i don't know if you know a little know what smart contract basically is about with smart contracts we basically make verifiable unimmutable contracts or i say yeah let me just do the word contract yeah so basically do something that is hard, difficult if not impossible to alter assigning ownership to a particular person for instance look how it will work if you've actually just like escrow is it escrow we call it i think in uh, one of the, in any of these exchanges you find that when a user wants to buy bitcoin or buy any coin for instance the user says the amount they want to buy and the the seller says the amount they want to sell before the transaction is completed the money is taken away from the buyer's uh wallet and is held by a special wallet i think it's called escrow something i don't know if i'm pronouncing it correctly so it's held in that wallet that wallet is like a middle ground between the seller and the buyer so the system is in such a way that if the confirmation of the sale is is is, is given then the the transfer of the coin and transfer of the money will be automatic will, will, will be done but if it's not confirmed the whole the parties involved to receive their money is back so that kind of security that kind of secure system that intelligently uh reacts to something or any alteration in terms of contract something like that that's basically how i can best simplify smart contract right at the top of my head right now so now uh, i thought about it like if you want to do that maybe we need that pulling unit app installed in the user's phones and then uh, there'll be verification of users of voters in that app as well now ballots will be issued by smart contract that is check the validity of the vote for instance if like i mentioned earlier you don't just cast your vote and it automatically counts in in line or in transaction or in processing time will be required for the contract for the system to confirm that this vote is valid it checks if it's multiple voting if it's if it's duplicate or invalid for whatever reason before that vote will count all right if they are validated of course the vote will now count now at the end of the day the result will be displayed in real time after uh or, or after the voting all right so now because it's blockchain any result that has been that has been you know any food that has been count or that has been casted cannot easily be altered so that way we can have a little bit more secure system of blockchain of voting for blockchain in the blockchain system so i don't know what i'm why i'm saying a lot of things that's part of the ways that i feel i i think blockchain voting might work but of course there are many factors that will mitigate against this of course acceptance of internet i mean the wide the technology is not it's not exactly there in our country so that could be a limiting factor and now there's a question that arises when you talk about blockchain for voting whether it's going to be hacked that i will try to answer on this slide we talked about a system being decentralized what it means is that it has no central server literally every computer is some kind of a server for that system it's more of a what you would call an onion technology i don't know does anybody know what is the browser that is called tor browser do we know tor browser it's a it's a browser that um bounces around the world a few times before it goes and it's a website you're trying to visit so in that way yeah. it's used to protect your identity yeah so yeah. it's it's basically so a good example of decentralized servers for the most part so um the servers in the in tor browser like jane mentioned it sort of works to screen your your location and your information so it sort of helps you keep you a little bit safe and then i'll keep you safe so that's basically what this guy is going to be like uh, since it's decentralized it doesn't have a central server so even if one of the servers are hacked it will not affect all the other ones all right so the chain continues even when one is hacked all right so let me read this one out unlike evil system systems that use centralized server of course i know evil system systems is the other end where you see evil team people maybe like what happens on twitter pools or linkedin pools those things are 
if the world is fair and free, yeah, we can even do a presidential election on Twitter. But of course, we know it's not. All right. So, so like, e voting systems is decentralized. All right. So, there was this conference, DEF in 2016, where they showed how blockchain can be hacked. Of course, it's something that can hack in the communication. All right. Uh, but, but that is a rare case. And even if it is, it's something that can, it's something that is a vulnerability of technology on every front. So, it's not just a, a blockchain problem. All right. So, yeah, it has been hacked. Demonstration has shown that it can be vulnerable to hackers' attacks. All right, but now immutable. Uh, immutable shows it talks about it not being changeable. You know when the results are in, they are in. All right. So to alter result, it will have to be changed in all the computers. Like we mentioned about decentralized systems. Now, if you want to alter a particular result, hey, I got ten votes in maybe server one. And I got seven votes on server two, and I want to. Sorry, I got ten votes on all the servers, and I want to make sure that I got twenty votes. If I change the vote count on server one, I wouldn't change. It wouldn't change in server two or the rest of the servers. All right, so that's why the the results will not be consistent. I think when it's not consistent, is is all is is burned. I think yeah, that's what that's what really happened in the system. All right, so it will have a, it will have to be changed in all the computers that it's servers now. So now, uh, yeah, this this is the the content of uh, a blockchain. So basically, you have the hashing, which uh, previous hash, the unique hash that's fingerprint, then proof of work. Proof of work is a deliberate delay. Like they deliberately delay. Proof of work is not really anything special. It's just a delay in the connection to chains so that any intrusion can be spotted so that's that's more like how it work i don't know if i'm making any sense but the point remains that you can you can't change results in all the servers even if you alter it to one in a blockchain system that would be a lot more healthy for election purposes and then advantages it reduces the costs in the traditional way printing transport and other logistics of elections account for like 46 percent of election costs so like a country like ours if we use blockchain technology we will, it will save a lot more on cost during elections we will save a lot of money nigeria spends billions in elections and people are hungry and in the end of the day these elections are not going to be free and fair so what's the point so that's one of the things that influenced my thinking about maybe a blockchain would help so yeah so the system is a lot more transparent and trustworthy people would trust blockchain technology a lot better than they would trust a politician i mean i wouldn't even trust a politician for any reason at all but yeah that's something that we can take an advantage of this thing so it has it has been used in west virginia and Sierra Leone, and they've used it for they've used it for their voting purposes and in these areas it proved to be more effective or, or more efficient than the traditional way of elections yeah so uh i hope this wasn't a waste of your time i hope you picked a thing or two from here uh, i didn't exactly prepare for this <laughs> i did this since august yeah so yeah for that it so i uh, if you have any questions you can please ask and uh, probably be able to give you an answer. Okay. Actually, I have a question. I, I actually looked into a voting system uh, a while back onto the blockchain, okay. and I elaborated some approaches to um, basically weights, votes, and uh, I was wondering if you had explored practically what it takes to actually invent a new voting system for maybe determining the election of a decision or someone. I don't think I heard that clearly. So I think so I've been I've been listening to a real life example. I, I, yeah. yeah, so so I, I, I think you you covered very well how blockchain can more securely physically gather votes from multiple participants. And I think I think that's definitely something the blockchain uh, shines at. What I was wondering is if there is any way that you, you come about as you looked into a voting system on the blockchain that will have um, an evaluation system that can actually balances our votes, put some weights towards certain particular voters against another, something that can be programmatically implemented, let's say on the ETH network, so that computation can be done on the votes as well. Yeah, I think it's possible. I mean, the Solid solidity is a language they use in programming stuff on blockchain. So I'm pretty sure some guys could do that. I mean, it's everything about blockchain is, is tech. So anything is possible about a system that will. So I, I believe you are looking at the system of uh, weighting the votes. Is that is that what you mean? Yeah, like that's to, what I was looking into. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I think something it, nice it, to me. Uh, we don't forget the fact that in elections, it's a matter of democracy. And if it's democracy, nobody's vote should matter more. So I don't see why waiting will be important and that will be, will be, will be helpful to anybody in that system. I mean, waiting would mean, okay, this guy knows better. His vote should mean more. If it's if it's democracy, then it's useless. You can't wait anything. Sorry, you're you're saying waiting in terms of each voter has a different weight. I think, um, like here in Australia, you can give each candidate a different weight. So I only get one vote, really? but I can yeah, I I can vote for multiple candidates. Oh, that's I've never heard of that I've before. That. You see that that's it's, that's the reason we. I'll send you a link. From- Right. It, it's I mean, it's I mean, similar to the way I did the voting for the uh, for the domain yeah. for the company yeah. domain. I, I did it. Yeah. I did it using that kind of style of voting. Yeah. You, yeah. You rank them and then do it. Yeah. But, but from where I'm where I'm from, I don't see that. I don't think that will work. Like it will cause more chaos. But it makes sense though. If, I mean, people should know more. Somebody who has been around for a long time, experienced different presidency, or maybe have a special interest in a particular field, should be able to say to have more say. And who leads that area so it makes sense yeah it makes sense i think i think on a blockchain technology like i mentioned about solidity i think it'd be possible to do that to i think it's even i'm even thinking about how that can work it's it looks something that can easily be done i mean from the end of uh, the verification process where it checks where it checks uh, the validity of the votes this could be the bridge maybe the person one person will be allowed to vote one two times the system will check okay this is your first vote that means the next vote of the person will be valid then after those two votes then every other vote from that same uh, person will be rejected so i think that makes sense it can be programmed to happen by devs of solidity i think that's possible so here i go uh i think if that's all the questions i would like to hand over to you to kick off the main event so uh sorry i gotta so Hiroko put in the chat that he offers his vote to me. So I understood that to be like proxy voting. So there is a thing called proxy voting where one voter can have more weight. Um, but really that voter is then representing several voters. Oh, yeah, and oh, that, wow. that one voter acts as a proxy where, you know, they're, they're supposed to be voting on behalf of the other person and respecting their wishes. But usually in that case, they're like, I, I don't care. Just let the other person decide for me. So... Um, in that way, yes, one voter can have more weight than other voters. Ah, uh, okay. I didn't know this was happening anywhere in the world, honestly. <laughs> I did not know this. <laughs> There's a lot of complications to voting. It's not as simple yeah. as like, do you want do you want this bad person or this bad person? <laughs> hey dear, if you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and turning on notifications so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Thank you.